That's the show I did in, in England, yes. the Hands Across the Sea, with uh, Arthur Pan and, and Fred Coe. We, we went to London and did an associated rediffusion. And that was a wonderful experience. I enjoyed it thoroughly. They, the television in those... They were, uh, tele British television was always just a little bit behind us. When all of my live plays had been done, then they started doing them, and they were all done in London eventually because they didn't have, they hadn't had a chance to develop any television writers. So they were taking American plays like crazy, do you know? And one man named Dennis Vance did all my shows, and one of the newspapers said, "What will Dennis Vance do when he runs out of Tad Moselle's plays?" Do you know? It was kind of wonderful. Uh, but we did the uh, Three Roads to Rome. It was. Done hands across the sea. It was a, with Deborah Carr, and it was three short plays, all taking place on the idea was, which was Fred or Arthur. I don't know who had the idea. I didn't. Um, all beginning on the terrace of the Hassler Hotel in Rome, but they would be three separate stories. Deborah Carr was the most versatile of the movie actresses of ever, <laughs> of any time. And so we wanted three completely different stories for her to do so she could play three totally different characters. So we did a, a Edith Wharton story called Roman Fever and uh, a Martha Gellhorn story called Venus Ascending and an Aldous Huxley story called, I've forgotten what that was called. And she could play three different, completely different roles. Uh, and it was great fun to write, it really was. And the experience in, in London doing it was was wonderful. It was so different from us. It was so relaxed and so casual and so kind of lazy, do you know. It was very slow. Uh, the British take much more time doing things where we get so frantic. And the first rehearsal, I remember, which was really a, a read-through of the play, of the plays, and was a very large audience. Jeremy Brett played uh, Deborah Carr's vis-a-vis -vis in one of the plays, and he later, of course, became Sherlock Holmes on television. But he was just a young, dewy-eyed, wonderful actor at the time. He was superb. You didn't blame Deborah Carr for falling in love with him. It was just marvelous to just to have on the premises, do you know. It was about an older woman in love with a younger man. And uh, the first rehearsal, the studio, the rehearsal hall was filled with all these people, and suddenly Everybody got up, and I thought, what's happened? You know, we're being raided? What's going on here? What had happened was that Miss Carr had arrived, and every morning of that rehearsal, when the star arrived, everybody in the room got to his feet. Did you ever hear of such a thing in the U.S. of A.? Never. It was wonderful. I really loved it. <laughs> And, you know, after that, she could go out and come in again as much as she wanted to. But when she first arrived, you got up for her. You stood for the star. And she was wonderful. She was such a dear to work with. And she did the Roman Fever with Celia Johnson. I don't know whether that name means anything to you. She did a wonderful play, movie called Brief Encounter, with, uh, uh, which was in the late 40s. But she was a fine actress. And she and Deborah Carr... The story that I adapted from was on the other, this was this whole project was a lesson in adaptation because I did three, and the story uh, is about two women on the Hassler. They've known each other all their lives, and they're meeting in Rome, and they make some great discoveries about each other. It's a delicious story. Um, they ha both have daughters who are off; they're not in the scene, uh, but they're in the on the fringes, and I wrote the story with just the two women. Uh, if you've got Deborah Carr and Celia Johnson, I don't want anybody else. I really don't. But I was taken to task for that. Or I should bring in, you know, open it up, bring in the daughters. And I said, I refuse to do that. Well, uh, for these two women, I just want you to watch them. It's a short play, 15 minutes. Just watch these two women work, for heaven's sake. Leave those crummy daughters. <laughs> And it was a miracle. They were just, it was a lovely show, but it never, they never could sell it in this country. It never was shown here. So odd. But um, I, there were odd, ram, odd things that happened afterwards. Uh, my phone rang one night, and it was, 
a man whose name I've forgotten, but he produced a movie called The VIPs that had Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton and Maggie Smith and all the great star British stars were in it. And he and the, another one called The Yellow the uh, the yellow Cadillac or something like that, which, which was another multi-star. He did those great extravagant movies. And he called me from Kennedy Airport to say that he had just seen this show, Three Roads to Rome, uh, in London. And he said, how long did you spend in Italy? I said, I've never been to Italy. He said, really? Well, how did you know? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I could have told him, but I didn't. But the fact that he got off a plane at Kennedy Airport and went to a phone booth and called me, I thought was wonderful, you know. Actually, the scene that I had most trouble with in Italy was when <coughs> one of the characters went to buy a chicken in an open market in, in a Italy, uh, an Italian city. Well, I don't know anything about that at all. I called Arthur Penn. I said, Arthur, I really don't know how this woman's going to buy this chicken in this Italian market, street market. He said, how would they do it in Steubenville? I said, oh. So I wrote it how they'd do it in Steubenville, and this man thought I'd been and spent my life in Italy. 